Uh, Ms. Angus. Okay. Present. Ms. Cherney. Here. Sorry. Ms. Jeannie? Here. Mr. Iamonte? Present. Ms. Levy? Present. Mr. Sarno? Here. Ms. Tarnowski? Here. Ms. Washburn? Here. And Mr. O'Brien? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome up Ms. Marianne Friedman from the NJSBA for some board training. Now it's a green light. <laughs> That's a good indicator, a green light. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mary Ann Friedman. I think I've met most of you before. Um, I am a field service representative with New Jersey School Boards Association. I was a board member for, thank you, for nine years. And I've been with the association for about 14 years. So it's a pleasure to be here tonight. And I want to bring, call to your attention the board self-evaluation packet. <clears throat> and on top of that, you have the actual board self-evaluation compilation. And as you know, each year we strongly recommend that boards do a self-evaluation. It is not mandatory any longer, but it is best practice. As far as we're concerned, it will set the table nicely for developing district and board goals. And it also gives the board an opportunity every year to evaluate and assess how they feel they've done, how you feel you've done as a board, as an entity, and then as individual board members. So I'm gonna go through the compilation and review the findings with you. Anything that's a 3.0 or above in the ratings, in the, in the averages, is considered a board that's working effectively together. And so we're gonna talk about some strengths and some challenges for you. The first page talks about quantification of relative value. And that's where we ask you to assess each of the nine areas that we ask you to evaluate yourself on in terms of planning, policy, student achievement, finance, board operations, board performance, board superintendent relationships, board staff relationships, and board and community. And we ask you to say whether each of those things is what you consider it to be vital, very important, somewhat important, not important, or not observed. And there's not observed throughout this evaluation so that if you don't feel that you have enough information to assess yourself as an entity, as a board, or as an individual, you can uh, mark that off, click on that, and then it doesn't count for or against the board or you. Okay, so the two things that you rated the highest, which makes me feel very good, is policy and student achievement. Those are rated as a 3.9, four is the highest that, that you can rate something. And then right after that came board staff relationships, and right after that came planning, finance, and board superintendent relationships. So you can see that those areas are rated very highly, and we're going to talk about how you rated yourselves as a board then in relationship to that value. So we think of the value as your expectation or what you feel your ability is as a board. And then the rating that you give to yourselves as a board, the overall rating is your performance. So if you turn the page and go to planning, and please ask questions if you have any questions in, in between or as we're going through. So this was an area of strength for you. An area of relative strength was with broad community input, establishing a district-wide mission and vision and multi-year plan for education. One of the areas that you may think of as a challenge or as an opportunity for growth is planning and collaboratively setting district and board goals. Now, I know that you do that every year, so I was a little surprised that that was an, an opportunity for growth for you, but I think we can take care of most of that tonight. I would also suggest I never go through the comments when I'm going through this, but I would suggest that you read through the comments because I think that they're very telling about how you feel about each other and about the board as an entity. Policy was, there were some areas for strength in here, of strength in here, operating as a policy making body, developing broad policies to give the administration the sufficient authority and latitude to operate the district on a day-to-day -day basis 
was a strength, and then ensuring that administration develops appropriate um, procedures and regulations to implement the board's policy intent. Opportunity for growth was using written policies as the framework for your decision making, and also reviewing and updating the policy manual. <clears throat> Any questions so far? <clears throat> Okay, moving into student achievement. <clears throat> I Excuse apologize me. for I'm my sorry, memory. Marianne, yes. I do have a question. So the bottom box on each of those about you, the board member, as a board member, I, that is, uh, that's how the, that's the self-reflection. So the top box is, is how we rated the board as a whole. And the other one is how we voted for, how we voted for ourselves. Correct. Okay. And you can see that there are opportunities for growth in both areas. As, as a board and as individuals, okay? Um, student achievement is also an area of strength for you. Really all of this is an area of strength, but specifically using the expertise of your professional staff and the development of curriculum and ensuring that it's focused on student achievement and also setting high standards for all students using multiple assessments and assessment measures. Those were very high areas of strength for you. But the entire, the entire category as a board was an area of strength. Okay, finance. This was also, um, there were a couple of areas of strength in here, Pol providing policy guidelines and parameters rating to, rate related to your goals for budget development and evaluation, and then also requiring that all expenditures, uh, requests for unbudgeted expenditures have a reason as to why and where that money is coming from. Um, two opportunities for growth were um, exercising financial oversight of all aspects of district operations in accordance with statutes, and also balancing the educational needs of students with the impact of budgetary increases. So those are two areas that you may wanna take a look at in terms of opportunities for growth. And you, at the end, we ask you, the two questions that we ask you, what do you feel are the three um, significant challenges facing the district. And I know that budget and S2 and your ability to, to get state aid is a big is a big issue down here. So this goes this stands to reason that this would be going on. Word operations, an area of strength was holding your meetings in compliance with statute policies and bylaws. And then relative strengths were respecting the administration's leadership by allowing, providing them um, by thoughtfully deliberating the recommendations of the superintendent and providing time funding and opportunity for orienting and updating new board members and board members that are already on the board for going to different programs and things like that. Other areas of relative strength were that your board method of governance contributes to overall effectiveness and lessens the um, time for each board member. Um, or lessens the total work for each board member. Um, also, your governance has clearly defined bylaws and your board method of governance ensures appropriate communication to the board. So those were all areas. Numbers two through five are opportunities for growth. And I think when you go through the, when you have time to go through the comments, you'll see that those are validated by the, both, those scores are validated by the comments. Board performance, there were a couple of areas of relative strength here, recognizing that authority rests with the full board at a legally advertised meeting with a quorum of the board, uh, making every effort to attend your board meetings. There are nine of you here tonight, that's wonderful. And recognizing the need and importance for confidentiality, that was also an area of strength. Avoiding even the appearance of, of, of impropriety of a conflict of interest and operating in accordance with the board, um, the board members code of ethics was also an area of strength. And again, numbers four and five, I think as you go through the comments, you'll see it validates why those numbers are where they are. And I would really like to just take a moment and encourage you. I've, I've had Barnegat for quite a while. Um, I actually went back to having Barnegat or I go back to having Barnegat, I think in 2009. And so I know that there are times when you all don't necessarily agree with each other and disagreement is fine. 
but disagreement needs to be on a professional level and on the disagreement of what the what the option what the um the conversation is about not necessarily with the individual if you can keep the personalities out of this that would really be great because and i'm not asking you to give up anything that you're not ready to give up and i've had this conversation with the board back in 2009 i believe it was you could if you can come into this room you don't have to like each other outside of this room but when you come into this room if you can leave whatever disapprovals you have of each other or whatever at the door I promise you can pick them up when you leave okay because everybody has stuff that they want to leave at the door but when you come into this room if you can commit to doing what's in the best interest of all of the students which is why you were elected then you'll be able to move mountains for your students and continue to improve student achievement and you've done great things that the superintendent and the administrative team and the teachers have done great things with your test scores and with improvements in student achievement over the past two years. You want to continue to move that forward. But if there's a lot of disagreement, which is what I'm seeing in these comments, you're going to at some point negatively impact student achievement. And I would really encourage you to not do that, to not go down that road. Because once you start down that road, it's much more difficult to get back. Okay, so just to think about that in terms of leaving whatever you need to at the door, coming in, knowing that each of you is doing what's in the best interest of all of your students, trying not to go after each other personally. If you disagree with something, that's fine. Disagreements are, are fine. And diversity of opinion is fine. We look for that. That's something that, that, that it adds value to the board. That's why there are nine of you and not just two of you or three of you that all think the same way, because we value that diversity of thought and we encourage that diversity of thought. But there's an acceptance that has to go along with that. And I know when you see the comments that you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, any questions? The next area is board superintendent relationships. This was an area of strength, keeping the superintendent informed about community and school issues and aspirations, um, conducting a comprehensive and fair annual evaluation of the superintendent. You do that every year, working with the superintendent to develop performance objectives um, that are consistent with the district goals and in compliance with district policy and regular dialogue on progress towards district goals. So when we talk about goals in a few minutes, we're going to talk about the um, the the best practice really is for four times a year to have updates on district and board goals. I always suggest, this is gonna make the goal setting part go a little bit faster because I'm talking about it already. So, um, but I always suggest that, that when you ask the superintendent to provide an update on the district goals, that you also provide an update on the board goals because that lets your community know that not only did you take the time to develop those goals, district and board goals, but you're still focused on them. So since that usually happens, the development of those usually happen over the summer. We recommend November as a good starting point. Then January, because January, if you are seating new board members, they'll be aware of what the board goals and the district goals are and where, what, how far you've come on those two areas. And then March, because that's when you're getting ready to sit down and do the superintendent's evaluation again. So you need to know exactly where the district stands in terms of the achievement of those district goals. Again, reporting out on the board goals as well, and then June to wrap everything up, to wrap up the year and let everybody know how you did, and also to decide whether there are things that you need to carry over. Since COVID, we're seeing a lot of carryover of things. The goal statements are sometimes staying exactly the same, but then the action plans take you to the next level of where you need to go. So in terms of student achievement, you might see the same student achievement goal, but then the, um, the indicators and the different activities would be different based on what progress you made last year and what further progress you would like to make this year. Okay, so the board superintendent relationship was a strength for you. Board staff relationships, this was also a strength, providing for public recognition of staff and um, staff achievements. I know that you do that on a regular basis and ensuring that your actions and decisions are translated and quickly and effectively communicated to the staff. That was also an area of strength. 
treating district staff with courtesy and respect was also an area of strength and providing effective personnel policy. All of those were areas of strength. And last but not least is the board and community. This was an area where you had um, strength, um, areas of strength, acting as representatives for every child in the district, very important, promoting community use of the schools and facilities and providing opportunity for meaningful parental involvement. There are a few in there that are opportunities for growth. And I, I can honestly tell you that most districts right now feel that they're really struggling with a community relations program or a public relations program, because that's something that really has to be reevaluated every year as to how you're getting your message out. And so um, that's something that you can, can take a look at as well. So then in identifying the challenges facing the district, we asked you to identify three challenges that you feel are facing the district. And they mostly had to do with funding, retaining staff and stability of staff improving student achievement, parental support, and then class sizes and crowd, overcrowding. And then the areas that we asked you to identify for board training were communication among the board, roles and responsibilities, and the board working together. So any comments or questions before I go to the charts? Okay, the charts are just a visual representation of what the numbers all showed. And on the first chart, you'll see that the value, as I said before, is pretty much what your expectation is for the board. And you'll see the value is the gray, um, or it's kind of a greenish bar going up. And then the board rating is how you rated yourselves as a board. And we kind of liken that to your performance. So what you wanna see in each of these areas are those two columns being pretty close together. So there's some opportunity for growth here in some of these areas. Those first five areas from planning to board operations are your task areas. And that's the last four operation areas are your relationship areas. The second chart looks at board to individual and your individual ratings were all higher than the board ratings. Typically what we see in this area is in those task areas, planning to board operations Usually the board feels that they work better together as an entity than they do as individuals. And then in those relationship areas, it's usually the individuals who feel they work better than the board does together. So you can see that these are kind of um, the individual ratings were, were greater than the board ratings. So that's something that hopefully can be worked on as well for the board to come together. And then the third chart is the current year over the, the previous year and the ratings in 2023 are all a little bit less than the ratings in 2022. Okay, so again, opportunity for growth. What questions might you have about the board self-evaluation? Okay, we're gonna go into the goal setting portion. Here we go. So basically, you know why you do goal setting. You're doing goal setting to be able to hold the superintendent accountable to you as a board of education. This is how, one of the ways that you hold the superintendent accountable because the superintendent's evaluation <clears throat> has to have by statute a portion that's um, that you evaluate the superintendent on towards the progress of achievement of the district goals. Now, because you start that evaluation in March, you're always evaluating on the progress being made towards the district goals. So sometimes those goals may not be achieved by March or April when you go to um, do your portion of the, the evaluation. And then there are the standards, but there has to be a district goal setting portion. So it really does set the course for your student success. What are we doing well? What areas do we need to improve on? And what areas are we focused on now that we'd like to continue with? Basically, we're trying to close opportunity gaps and learning gaps for our students. That's not nice. I don't know what happened to that slide. But basically what we were looking at is what did we learn over the past couple of years about the resilience of our staff and our students? 
What kinds of things did we see in terms of equity? The one that one of the things there weren't too many things that COVID did that we improved with with COVID, but one of those things was technology equity for all of our students. We turned from March 13th of 2020 to sometimes boards didn't have and districts didn't have one to one technology for all of their students to pretty much by the following Wednesday. Everybody had technology because otherwise they couldn't learn from home and we you all flipped on a dime and really turned on a dime to be able to make sure that the students had what they needed and that your staff had what they needed so that the staff could teach from from their homes and your students could learn from their homes. So you do have this in your packet and you can take a look at this. Um, some of the other things we talk about are what are the areas that we learned about our parents and our community members. There was a lot of resilience out there, a lot of resilience. Oh, there we go. In terms of the board, parent communication and making sure that we were able to communicate with our parents over various means, and um, also recruiting and retaining high quality staff. Those were things that we all learned about over the past couple of years. So this is the stair-step model of responsibility. The beliefs, mission, and vision, and the strategic planning goals are done by the board with stakeholder input. And we just finished up your strategic plan last year. So you're in the process <coughs> of now implementing that strategic plan. But all of that information from the strategic plan came from your stakeholder groups. And you had fabulous turnout at each and every meeting. You really did. So that's that's a commendable on, on the part of the board and the, your community and stakeholder. Your staff members were there, parents and community. And the board and the superintendent. Tonight, we're going to talk about the district goals and the board of education goals. If there are merit goals, that's done separately by between you and the and the superintendent. And do you have merit goals? Okay, we won't worry about talking about that then. Um, and then principal building and department goals, teacher and classroom goals, and student goals are all developed by the staff in collaboration with the superintendent. And so the way these things are all linked, this is the way the strategic planning goals and the district goals really cascade down to the students. So it all cascades down from district and from strategic planning goals to district and board goals, um, superintendent goals, administrators goals, building goals, department goals, the staff SGOs, PGOs and PDPs, and increased student, that all filters down and cascades down to improving student achievement for your students. So everyone owns the district goals. Hopefully you're going to establish those tonight or between tonight and perhaps your next meeting, establish those. And I know Dr. Latwis has some suggested goals, proposed goals for you that he's gonna talk about in a minute. After those are developed between the board and the superintendent, they're the superintendent's responsibility to implement and to achieve, but it's the board's responsibility to continue to support the superintendent and administration and provide the resources for those. Okay, that does not go away. That stays with the board after the, the district goals are formulated. And those have to do with instruction and program, curriculum, professional development, communications, facilities, finance, and those kinds of things, staffing, personnel. Board goals are set by the board to improve your processes and sometimes your policy development or your policy review. And they are usually used in conjunction with the self-evaluation. And we're working really hard to try and have the board goals have a section in the board self-evaluation so that you would be able, just like you do in the superintendent evaluation, the superintendent drops in the district goals, and then you evaluate those, and then you have the standards. We would like to add board goals in the, the self-evaluation so that you can rate whether you feel that you've accomplished those things or satisfactory progress has been made and things like that. And the board goals usually have to do with processes and procedures. Superintendent personnel goals usually would be derived from the previous year's CSA evaluation. If there were things that the board felt needed to be addressed by the superintendent, they would talk to him about them. And miracles we don't need to worry about at this point. So why do you set goals? Equitable policy development, they help you to stay focused on your priorities and they set those priorities. They allow you to implement programs for the district and professional development. By having that periodic evaluation, 
You can recalibrate anything if it needs to be recalibrated. Some, one of the other things that we learned in COVID was that stuff happens, COVID happened, and sometimes things have to be extended a little bit further than what we hoped because other things come up. It also really allows for effective communication, both among board members and the superintendent, and also with your community, because your board and district goals should go up on your website once they've been approved. And then there's that accountability piece. The, what the district goals are what you use to hold the superintendent accountable to you. So we know that effective school boards define clear goals. They also set high expectations and shared beliefs for all of their students. And answering these essential questions, what would most dramatically accelerate student achievement in our district in the upcoming year and address those opportunity gaps? What do we need to help provide um, social, emotional and mental health social emotional learning and mental health services and opportunities for our students and our staff. What are those emerging mental health issues that we might be having? And then how are we going to make sure that our budget also aligns with our district goals? That's really important. Also, what will we do to help our students meet 21st century um, requirements? Critical thinkers, collaborative problem solvers, digitally literate, civically responsible culturally responsive with a love of learning and moral, ethical, empathetic, and compassionate. So your mission statement is our collective mission is to nurture and educate our children in accordance with all curriculum standards to prepare them for responsive citizenship and success in life. It's a great mission statement and I use it when I'm doing other strategic plans and they're developing their mission statements to show. I don't let them copy it, but I want them to see an example of a great mission statement. So your strategic planning goals from this last time are learner success, social emotional learning, community partnerships and facilities and finance. You have that in your packet as well. And your district goals for 2022-23, you've already had your update on those through the evaluation and then by the end of the year. And I'm gonna punch it over to Dr. Latwis so he can talk to you about his proposed goals, 2023-2024. So the proposed goals are in line with what we actually had last year. Um, we felt that obviously goal one and goal two being academics, that's been pretty consistent for the last five years. And you'll see that goal one uh, focuses more on the tested areas, grades three through 11. And the percentages uh, that we target there are in line with what the state is uh, expecting of us for growth. Um, so meeting those numbers would be satisfactory and then exceeding those numbers would be exemplary if that's done in 50 percent or more of the tested grades and then you'll see in goal two is more the primary grades uh, where we don't necessarily have the standardized testing to look at or the benchmark assessments to look at we utilize our esgi and star reading um, to be able to provide uh, specific indicators of success there and those are um, outlined uh, very similar to what you saw last year um, and then goal three would be facilities. Obviously, that's in line with strategic plan. Um, and that's in line with something that we've had for the last five years as well, um, with, the, I, with uh, the, the idea that we are continuing uh, to look at investing in our asset and providing opportunities for our students um, through those, uh, through those uh, as the, the investments in the asset. So that is goal three. And then goal four was something that was new for last year, and we felt we wanted to carry it over again for this year, but it speaks to the culture and climate of the staff. A uh, year and a half ago, we conducted a culture and climate survey, and that uh, gleaned some specific information as far as where our staff felt we can improve towards uh, the ideal cu uh, culture and climate. And uh, this year, we based uh, we took the five things that stood out um, from that culture and climate survey, and we built action plans around them. And we continue we would like to continue to focus on that for this upcoming year. Um, and again, kind of expand out on that uh, that goal from last year. So obviously open to any feedback, but these were the proposed from the administration feeling that obviously the goals would, that uh, four was a continued work in progress. So we wanted to keep doing that. And obviously goal one and two speak to the academics, which is you know really the basis of uh, why we're here. And then goal three would be investing in the asset. And they do follow in line and are aligned with your strategic planning goals as well. Any questions from the board to Dr. Latwis? about the district goals. So do you typically think on these for 
for a bit and then come back at the next meeting and approve them or uh, we've done it both ways if people are comfortable with carrying over that would be up to you guys yeah i think uh, i'm comfortable carrying them over so. Mr. Grace. So this is where I usually say, I need to see heads going up and down if you agree with the goals. And if you don't, then they're going side to side. Think the bobblehead dog on your grandfather's car, the dashboard of your grandfather's car. My husband always yells at me when I get home and says, you didn't do the bobblehead dog again, did you? Everybody knows what that is. So if heads aren't going up and down, or if you need to take more time, that's fine. But if these are going to be the goals and you're okay with those, then Heads going up and down would be a good indicator of that. A quick question. We're, sure. Have we talked about any of this prior to today or is this um, goals? I mean, just, just no, what we're seeing was, now is just what we're getting. What yeah, it was proposed on it. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I think last year we did this in June and then we approved them in July, I want to say. So, I mean, we do have the option to do them in August if we'd like to continue to kind of kick them around a little bit. Um, it's maybe pretty straight again on my end just reviewing them to see if they align kind of what i'm thinking i'm sure each individual may just want to on their own might want to add to it and say oh, i thought we were good there not good you know just my opinion that's all okay so the goals memo that i send you these will be proposed goals to be further further thought about and talk and discussed okay does that work? Mm -hmm. That works, yep. Okay. Could we possibly get a copy of these action plans for goal four sent to us? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so what typically happens after after the board goals, after the district goals are developed, is that the superintendent will develop those action plans. And I'm sure he has started the development of those action plans as well. Um, the action plans belong to the superintendent. They are how he's going to get you from where you are today to where you wanna be in June of 2024. So if the board decided that they wanted to deviate from those action plans, you would not be able to hold the superintendent accountable for the achievement of that particular any particular goal where you decided to deviate the action plans for they have to be the superintendent's plan for how he's going to get you from point a to point b the goals you are the what people you determine what it is you want to see happen and those are those are the district goals that are following in line with the um, strategic planning goals and with last year's goals so if there are concerns about those, you wanna have those conversations so that the superintendent knows that before he goes into full development of the action plans, okay? But in order to hold the superintendent accountable for those action plans and for the um, accomplishment of that goal, you have to leave the action plans to the superintendent, okay? You can ask questions about it, but you don't wanna say, I want you to take this, the board shouldn't say, we want you to go in this direction instead of the direction you wanna go in, okay? This is what the action plan template looks like from us, and I'll send this to you. It's a blank action plan template. For, it looks very similar to the strategic planning template that we send, and it will have the different activities, objectives, different activities for each of the goal areas, and then who's responsible for it, the board or staff, what are the resources that we need, usually time, people, money, what are the time frames? when can we expect that particular line item or that indicator to be accomplished? And then how will we know it's been accomplished? What are the indicators of success? And I always suggest to boards that when they have their, their updates on the progress towards the goals, that they take a look at those action plans to be able to say, say you have your first one in November, you have your first update, to be able to say, did everything that was supposed to happen by November 1st or November 15th, whatever that date is, did those things all happen? If not, how come? And when would we be able to expect to see that happen? Okay. And then following through, because that's how you know that the progress is being made towards those district goals throughout the year and not just at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year. 
okay, by those indicators. So moving into board goals, these are support, these are in support of the district goals and they're in your areas of responsibility, which are policy development, oversight and monitoring, ensuring comprehensive curriculum and instruction and communications, both internal and external. So some of the things you wanna think about are what professional development would assist the board in improving their governance skills, what professional development needs came through on the self-evaluation and what professional development is needed to support the district goals. It's going every other click. Sorry about that. There's like a delay. So some examples of board goals are complete the superintendent's evaluation within the statutory timeline. You don't need to do that because you've done that every year. You might want to do something like review our bylaws to review and revise and ensure they reflect our current practices. Um, you might another uh, example of a goal is to explore the option of committees of the whole versus um, separate committees or become more effective advocates for public education through professional development and advocacy. Other things to consider are what are, were our strengths in the self evaluation and um, what are things that we do well and what do we need to be focused on and how can we better support our administration in achieving the district goals. So I was able to find from 2001 to 2022, you had three board goals. And the first one was the board should attend at least two trainings over the course of the year. Do you remember whether that was accomplished or not? I know I saw a lot of you at county meetings. We did, we did as a board, I don't think we had two separate training sessions, but uh, individually we had a lot of different. Okay, and then and then the board would um, would continue to review and update when necessary each board policy in the district. So that's something that you could continue to work on if you wanted to. Um, the strategic planning goal was accomplished. We finished that last year, so that was definitely accomplished. So what I'd like to recommend is from the the self evaluation that you perhaps have four trainings from NJSBA or from somebody else, some other person who could come in. We have our attorneys can come in. I know you have a board attorney here. I'm not taking anything away from you, I promise. Um, we have our legal, our legal department, we have our labor relations department, we have um, communications, and we also have our policy department. And then you have me. So I could come in and provide a couple of those trainings you could have somebody from labor relations come in if you wanted to, to talk to you about negotiations. Are you starting negotiations anytime soon or you're done? Should be this year. Should be this year. Should be this year. Okay. So maybe you would want one of our um, labor relations folks to, they could virtually come in and meet with you for about an hour, maybe before an actual meeting. Um, that would probably be executive session. Okay. So you would have to do that in exec. Um, and then I could come in and talk to you. You have a sampling of our programs on the last, so last page on the left-hand side. You could take a look at that. You don't have to do it now, but if you wanted to do four programs, that would be something that we could do. And I think that that could be helpful towards improving board communications with one another and with team building, et cetera. What do you think? So four trainings over the next year? Okay. Yeah, I think that's two more. I'm sorry? Yeah. I, 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 okay. And then do you want to continue um, to review and update when necessary the policy manual? That is ongoing. Typically, it's just a standard operating procedure. So I don't know if that's more of a normal function or if it should be a goal. I, I think okay. we do have, we, we should discuss that further. Okay. If we do review. Okay. Do you want to keep that? Um, that individual, do you want to make individual board members attend two trainings yes. outside of, <laughs> who did I hear yes from? Um, so there are lots of different training opportunities that you can go to. Um, almost all of them have a hybrid component right now based on, you know, things we learned from COVID, right? One of those other things we learned. So county meetings, you can either go and enjoy a nice meal and network with other people, or you can jump onto the meeting when it comes to the training portion of the meeting. You don't get dinner delivered to your house, I'm sorry to say, but if you wanna to go to the, the location, you can get a nice dinner. 
um, that would be something that you could do. And then we have different regional programs throughout the year also that are provided by the field services department. And most of those will have a, a um, hybrid component as well. So there are things that you can do virtually if you can't get out. And we do understand that this is a fraction of what you do in your lives. There are lots of other things you're doing. You're probably parents of small children, or maybe you're taking care of grandchildren or small children of your own. You may be taking care of, of relatives, elderly relatives. So we rec and you may have jobs. So we recognize that this is one faction of what you do. So we're trying to make things as, as accessible as possible through virtual meetings. So would it be okay to have board individual board members attend to training sessions? Yes, yes, I think so. Everybody in agreement? Heads? Yep, okay. Okay, and then you'll talk about the, um, the, the policy review. We'll talk about that further. We'll have to talk about that in our company. Okay. And if it's already something that's in progress and that you already have a system for, it doesn't necessarily need to be a goal. Right. Yeah. That's just what I have to confirm is how that how that is uh, ongoing. Okay. Are you good with two goals? Possibly a third if, if policy gets in there? Yes. Okay. So I will type this up. This will be your action plan. I would like for you, I always suggest that the boards create an action plan for their board goals. It's not rocket science. It's just creating some individual activities that will help you to know whether you're on target or not and when those things would be achievable. So for instance, if there are four trainings, you would have, you know, major activity would be to have four trainings over the course of the year and maybe put some months in there that you would like to have those trainings. Okay, and then, um, you know, we can talk about who you'd like to have come in because it can be other people from the association as well. It doesn't just have to be me. Okay, and then who's responsible, the resources, the timelines and the indicators of success. And then you can report out on the board goals as you ask the superintendent to report out on the district goals. And again, that lets your public know and your community members and your parents and your staff that not only did you take the time tonight to develop these and over the next meeting, but that you're still focused on them over the course of the year. Okay. Any questions on goals? You're a very quiet group tonight. Okay, if you have any questions, you have business cards for me inside the packet, please feel free to give me a call, um, shoot me an email. And I thank you for everything that you do for all of your students and your staff and your community, because it's a lot that you do. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Friedman. Thank you. Okay, I will talk to you all soon. Um, we have a slight change from our normal um, agenda uh, flow. We're going to have executive session uh, coming up here in a minute. Um, and that would be the change. Usually that's at the end of our meetings, but we're going to meet uh, be before the meeting tonight to discuss some personnel and legal matters. Um, so can I please have a motion to adjourn into executive session? So moved. Second. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Ayamante? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, we're in exec at uh, 649. The folks online, we will be back.
Um, can I please have a motion to adjourn executive session? So moved. Second. Ms. Angus. Yes. Ms. Cherney. Yes. Ms. Jeannie. Yes. yes. Mr. Iamonte. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Sarno. Yes. Ms. Tarnowski. Yes. Ms. Washburn. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. We're adjourned executive at uh, 8.02. Okay. Uh, now we'll jump into item number five, the Barnegat Bragg. All right, so without further ado, Nora, why don't you come up and we will first look at the Collins. Yeah. Hello, I think you all know me, Nora Green. I'm the very, very, very proud principal of the Collins School. Um, I wanted to speak to you all tonight to highlight the wonderful things that we have been able to accomplish within the last few years. I've had the benefit of not only a teacher in this district, but also a coach and supervisor. I am a proud Barnegat resident, parent, and now principal. Barnegat is not only my career, but my home as well. So I'm very excited to be up here to talk about the wonderful things at Collins. Um, the benefit of having all our grade level teachers under one roof has been profound. The Collins administration has worked as a team with both our curriculum department, student services department, as well as Mrs. Regina Santola, principal at the Donahue School. Kindergarten through second grade is a unique time for students. This is a time when students are still learning to self-regulate their emotions and to also become independent thinkers and learners. Collins teachers were able to work together to build into their schedules time for productive play as well as specific social emotional lessons appropriate to each grade level. This along with the implementation of Seahawk tickets, a school-wide age appropriate positive behavior support system has led to an improvement in overall behavior within the Collins School. This improvement has enabled teachers to increase academic achievement in students. My teachers at Collins School are exceptional. And I have to say that again, they're absolutely exceptional, each one of you. Our I Ready data showed that in math, our students grew by 48% and in the year at 60% proficiency. In reading, they grew by 51%. That's 5-1. Ending the year at 71% proficiency. If you told me that five years ago, I would have been like, we'll never get there. And we have gone well above. Our STAR data showed a 23% group growth and our students ending the year at 71% at benchmark. That data is triangulated. We have two sources telling us that. These numbers are a testament to the teamwork of our district. Without a clear planned organized vision from our superintendent and his leadership team, these amazing increases and in proficiency levels would not be possible. I would like to thank the Board of Education for continuing to support the superintendent and leadership team with this vision. Because of this support, I can send students to the Donahue School secure in their K-2 skills so that they can be successful in third and fourth grade and beyond. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna take you, tell you a little story. So hello everyone. For those of you who do not know me, I am Regina Santola. I'm a Barnegat resident for over 30 years and a part of this Barnegat team for over 20 years as a parent, a teacher, an elementary supervisor, and now the principal of the Donahue School. So as an educator, I've always looked at the summer the way most people view New Year's Eve. It's a time to reflect, learn lessons, celebrate successes, feel grateful, and create a plan of action for the new school year. I became part of this admin team two months after Dr. Latwis became our superintendent, and it's been quite a ride. The success we are currently enjoying is a direct result of a well thought out collaborative planning process. The overarching goal was so large, it couldn't happen overnight, so it has been a process. At the elementary level, the majority of our students were unable to read at grade level. We all remember that. So this was our priority. We implemented fast forward for every student and saw such tremendous success. The company interviewed Mrs. Green, Mrs. Mayo and myself and published our results from our district. Simultaneously, we created the highly successful transitional first grade program, completely revised and expanded the GNT program, added world language, 
And, the, and as an elementary supervisor working with the four elementary principals at the time, we would let teachers know where to target their instruction, but they needed more direct support in managing the growing needs of our students. It was not until Dr. Latwis implemented instructional coaches and elementary vice principals that teachers had the resources they needed to support the academic and social emotional needs of our students. That's when it all came together. Every program that we needed, every person who was added to our team made a difference. Every piece of the puzzle matters and it matters who those people are. When I became a principal, I was a nervous wreck. I leaned on Dr. Latwis and requested many, many meetings. He accommodated those requests and never made me feel bad about it. He listened, he guided, and he provided resources. And by that, I mean people. Thank you to Steve Nickel, Jim, Dan, Joe, Brennan, all of you for walking me through all the things they never tell you about. Very much appreciated. But truly the initial guidance and support meant the world to me because Dr. Latwis believed in me before I did to recognize people's potential, to know how to build leaders so the team complements one another, that's a gift. Brian reminds me of Ted Lasso because he believes in us, all of us, students, staff, and board members. And I believe we would not be enjoying the success I'm about to share with you if we didn't have him as our leader. It is with great joy that I can announce that the Donahue School is now reaping the benefits of the success of the pre-K to two buildings. We have maintained the 70% star reading proficiency average that we inherited from the Collins School and appreciate all of their hard work. I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to give a great big hooray to the Donahue staff who overwhelmed me, which is not easy to do, with the growth their students showed on the hot off the press and improved new NJSLA data. JTDS increased an average of 16% in math and an impressive 22% average in ELA. I am so proud of our students and our staff. We are no longer a targeted school in need of improvement because we've met our state targets and we are now sending our students to the secondary level prepared. That was not always the case. It goes back to the sign Mrs. Mayo gave me, which is hanging in my office and I read it every day. I didn't say it was going to be easy. I said it was going to be worth it, and it is. But it is not a one-man show. It couldn't be done without the collaborative effort of everyone on our team. We, I mean, I can't name everybody, but you know, we have Stacy from Student Services, Carolyn Johnson from Guidance, Jen, Nora, Michelle from Pre-K, John Germano was instrumental in providing support we needed this year, as well as our security team, Lisa Vargas, both of whom, you know, on a daily basis, we need you guys and your help is always appreciated. And of course, my right and left hand, Mrs. Shork and Mrs. Mayo for their insight and their passion. I know I can be a lot and I thank you all for putting up with me. But in closing, because the summer is like New Year's Eve to me, I wanted to share some of those reflections and successes with you. So thank you to Dr. Latwis for being an inspirational leader. Thank you to our, all of our puzzle pieces, that's all of you, for all your hard work and knowing that as a team, we achieve more. And most importantly, thank you to the Board of Education for providing us with a leader who on so many levels has created a better Barnegat. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Josh Toddings. I'm the principal of the Brackman School. Um, I don't have a formal speech written as uh, my esteemed colleagues, but there's just so much to talk about that I'm kind of going off the cuff here and we'll give a few statistics, but really uh, my experiences in Barnegat, I love this district. So this will be my 21st year in the district and uh, you know, 18th, I believe, as an administrator. And I've had the unique opportunity of pretty much working in every building in the district over my time here, had multiple superintendents, administration, uh, pretty much almost worked with every single teacher and staff member and administrator that's sitting out here. And it's, uh, they all are truly amazing. And I can speak from experience that it's not just the ladies selling their schools. Um, I've been with all of them and, and we're, we're, we're seeing the fruits of our labors and congratulations to all of you guys, the Donahue School, Collins School for keeping up. You know, I believe what we started a couple of years ago with the reconfiguration, Nora was taking over, Regina going to Donahue School. I was actually at both of those and I worked this way. So it's, uh, I'm proud of all of you guys for what they just shared with everyone. Um, with that being said as well, I thank you guys. Thank you, Dr. Latwis for the uh, direction you're taking us in. 
um, because you can see it's it's showing. Um, with all of that being said as well, it's, uh, you know, this is about you guys. And I want to thank, you know, Brackman, we had an amazing year. It was, it was a, a little weird start because we started with a brand new administration in the building. I had been out of that building for over 10 years, came back with Mr. Fiorentino. Then we had a brand new secretarial staff, um, new people, new nurses, new this. And it was like, we had no one to go to. Uh, Mr. Burke was our kind of lean on person there who had been in the building. And from there it was, uh, you know, let's, let's figure it out as we go. And everyone just stepped up and did a tremendous job. Um, I want to highlight just a few things with, with that effort and hard work. Um, just a few individual people, just a highlight for our benchmark, our top performers. We had Ms. Rebecca Kane, who had a 22% increase in her students' um, growth um, in both seventh grade ELA and eighth grade ELA. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Breda, 25% increase in seventh grade math. Uh, Mrs. Gasparino, 46% in eighth grade math, and also Algebra 1, 37% increase. Jen Martin in geometry, a 44% growth increase over the course of the year. And then just in certain class performances, um, Mrs. Boyd in pullout resource, a 31% increase. Um, Mrs. McCarty, who's sitting out here um, in her period five class, 26% growth. Um, Mrs. Schmitz with Ms. Kane, 21. I can go on and on. Mrs. Barwicky, 28%. Ms. Gasparino, again, 56 and 48%. Um, and those were just some individuals. But, you know, the, the accolades go to the entire staff. Um, we couldn't have done anything without the support of our admin, our, our supervisors. It's not just about the teachers as well, but it's also the administrators, our supervisors working hand in hand, getting more involved with our staff members, meeting with them, finding out what they need, doing those things. Our uh, master teacher, uh, Ms. Brazil, who does an amazing job getting in the classrooms, talking with the teachers, what do they need? So all of those supports, we thank you guys for providing them because it shows that it's working. Um, and with that being said, just a few more uh, data points. Our seventh grade math, from where we started to beginning at the end of the year, we had a 15.2% increase, seventh grade math, eighth grade, 38.2% growth in math from A to C, algebra, 28%. And geometry, 44.2% growth for the course of the year. So our eighth grade math and seventh grade crushed it. Um, moving on to ELA. Not as amazing, but still amazing in itself of what they did. Seventh grade had a 12.1% growth. And our eighth grade classes, uh, excuse me one second, had a 16.4% increase in their ELA from beginning to end of the year. So it's just what these people bring every day to the table, how hard they work. We have teachers that, that not only teach, they coach, they volunteer, they involve themselves in sporting events, after school activities, helping students, doing all those things to just get them to where they need to be and achieving what they want to achieve. So we are here tonight to celebrate them and thank them for all their efforts and uh, you know show a little bit of appreciation and gratitude for everything you guys do and uh, couldn't be prouder of all the schools and just to say thank you guys too, and you deserve this recognition because you're all amazing and just keep up the great work and uh, looking forward to next year because we're gonna rock it even better. So God bless all you guys and thank you. Great job. Of course, Mr. McGee, Barnegat High School principal. And you know, I echo that and I appreciate all the efforts of our elementary, all the way down to preschool, middle school teachers because ultimately they all end up at Barnegat High School. And we want to see that success carried through our entire school system. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful to see the trickle up effect that it's having um, and the scores just keep continuing to rise. Um, one of the initiatives that we were given, uh, just like every teacher, we set goals, right? And Dr. Lawless challenged our administrative team, my vice principals and myself and our supervisors to target areas of academic growth and be a little more strategic this year. And one of the areas that we saw was most stagnant was our ELA nine scores. And so there are some individuals uh, that put together a amazing targeted approach for growth for our ELA nine students this year. And I wanna recognize them here tonight. So led by our instructional coach, Ms. Sam Burke, if you would please stand when I call your name, not to embarrass you, but to recognize you because we do not get enough recognition. ELA nine teachers, Ms. Sue Bodwin, Ms. Lannis Baumgartner, Mr. Eric Putman and Ms. Sam Roa. Our history teachers, Ms. Lynn Clemente, Ms. Carissa Shearer, Mr. Drew Taggart, Mr. John Boyland, and Mr. Zach Rebner. And from our science department, Mrs. Aaron Connors, Mrs. Spisak, Mr. Mario Kunha, and Ms. Madison Laguse. Now,
Thank you for standing. I think it's important that we put faces with names. And you'll notice I didn't just call ELA teachers. There were science and history teachers. So this whole approach was very targeted, but also broad. The department worked collab collaboratively. You know, we use the Lincoln scores. We do benchmark A, benchmark B, benchmark C to track their progress throughout the year. Well, they created an additional assessment in the LA department, a benchmark, we called it a B plus, to look in more, more accurately target skills that they were deficient in coming out of benchmark B. They used that information and talked in their PLCs. Our supervisors did drop-ins to really formulate plans. They went with the supervisors for other curricular areas and then did cross-curricular initiatives. For example, Dr. Kennedy asked our science teachers to include nonfiction texts, cold reads, and pulling vocabulary from texts that they had never seen before. Ms. Camerata asked our social studies teachers to include primary and secondary sources. Our ninth grade teachers met with myself to discuss their plans, their initiatives, what the growth they were seeing with our students. They then, we then sent out blasts to parents of information just about testing in general and preparing for the assessments well in advance. Our school SAC ran school assemblies with our ninth grade students to prepare them for test anxiety and how to get ready to test on testing days. Um, Mr. Barbieri came over and, and we ran assemblies on just getting them psyched up and understanding the importance of these assessments, even in their ninth grade year, what that means for their pathway through education uh, at the high school level, how their success here dictates their future. Uh, Ms. Burke met with the teachers, then went into the classroom, giving them specific guidance on individual students and data where they had been finding success, where they had been finding shortcomings. She worked with them and running small groups and taught lessons herself to model those behaviors to students. Through all of that, we saw tremendous growth. Our NHS students even created a video to help our students prepare and get hyped up for the test. So what would that mean? On Form A to Form C, we saw an 8% growth in students meeting their scores. In bubble students, we saw 3% growth. Now, mind you, we hadn't seen any growth in almost four years in those two targeted areas. We also saw a 9% growth in students approaching standards and a 19% reduction in students that were partially meeting or not meeting where they needed to be. So tremendous growth for all of our students. But again, that benchmark data, that link it data, that is only information to predict the success they would find on the state assessment. So I think Ms. Regina rolled it out that we have some hot information right off the presses and they were just doing a link it uh, workshop the last two days. So did it work? Did it translate over? I am extremely happy to say for the first time in four years, we saw 9% growth in our students that were meeting and exceeding. And again, matching reduction in students that were not meeting. So it did carry over onto our state assessment. So congratulations to our ELA teachers, to our science and history teachers who work collaboratively in that approach. We appreciate your efforts and thank you for helping our students to find success. Just to kind of uh, uh, throw a few things out there. So a um, few weeks ago when we started getting this stuff rolling in, uh, we wanted to try to identify the best way that we could uh, bring as many people in as possible to show our appreciation uh, for the hard work that you guys do. And, and I've heard puzzle pieces mentioned a few times, and it really is that. I mean, when you think about all the different positions that go into a successful school and how all of those positions have to come together and work together to have student success, um, it's, it's pretty impressive when you see that. So, you know, you look at what the state uh, looks at us and holds us accountable for. Uh, with the going back to the No Child Left Behind and, and where we need to be by 2030. And, and they outline each year that you have to show at least 1.85% increase in ELA and a 2.85% increase in math. When you think about some of the numbers that were kicked around now, it shows you that we have not only met what the state expected us to do, but we have absolutely blown past that. And at the basis of everything that we do here, it's, it's, it's really to prepare students uh, for their educational journey and then what they're gonna do to be career or college ready when they, they leave here, right? To have those choices and those options. And where it comes down to us, you know, obviously, you know, it's not about just chasing a, a state assessment score or anything like that, but that is indicative of, of the level of preparation our students have. And that is indicative of, of where we are. And when you look at the state report card, they give you a, a score that goes far beyond just the academics. It goes into you know, uh, the social emotional, the attendance, graduation rates. It goes into a lot of those things and then it gives you a score. And when we were looking in the last couple months and we were seeing that the elementary band went from an average score of 29.5, which was good for bottom third in the state to a 62, which put us in the top third in the state. 
that's unbelievable growth in the last five years. That's an unbelievable turnaround. When you look at Brackman School and you see that they were bottom 10% four years ago, and now they're at the 50th percentile, that's unbelievable. And when you look at as you go up and you realize that academic gaps just get harder and harder to remediate the older the student gets, right? It becomes more challenging and more difficult. And you look at the success that they had at the high school level, um, specifically in ELA. And one of the things that we always preach about, it takes a village and that team effort and everybody coming together. And one of the things to really look at tonight that was so special was the fact that all of the different content areas came together to target that reading comprehension and that reading fluency and that ability to increase those skills in that area, which research shows is almost impossible to do. And to see that we had double digit growth in that area is, is nothing short of a miracle. And that really is a direct result of all of your dedication and your hard work. You guys are on the front lines, whether you're a guidance counselor, CST, a related service provider, power professional, gen ed teacher, special ed teacher, whatever role you play in that, in that building, uh, instructional coast administration, everybody coming together to work towards that common goal. It's a lot. And education has changed drastically over the last 10 years, right? And in the last five years, we have changed drastically in Barnegat. And we have done so many new things and different things to try to attack this issue. And it is so exciting to now be on the other side of this and start to see some of that success. I literally sat here and just for two seconds, just started writing down. We had Inspire, Nessie, Fast Forward. We revamped the PD Academy, revamped the evaluation model, revamped RTI, BSI. We became data-driven. We have instructional coaches. Lesson plan manual, assessment manual, iReady, Rhyme Magic. We did something, you know, that was very minor, so I shouldn't even bring it up, but a reconfiguration um, that really, you know, that was kind of falls by the wayside. Nobody ever talks about that. But we did all that with navigating COVID, and we did all that with absolutely no substitutes uh, to speak from. So you guys are just not allowed to get sick ever. Um, so when you think about all that and you bring that all together, it is so unbelievably impressive what you guys have been able to do. And, uh, you know, we wanted to have you guys out tonight. Uh, there's really nothing that we could possibly do to show you how much we appreciate all of the hard work that you guys all put in because it's not easy. It's, it's a different profession than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. There's so much more that goes into it. It is such a, a difficult thing to do day in and day out. It requires so much more than just what the time that you put in here and it's appreciated and it's noticed. And, and this is something that we can finally look at and as a tangible result, you guys are actually seeing the tangible result of that hard work. It's not just knowing that you're doing a good job. Now we actually have something we can point to and say like, wow, like we've literally doubled where we are. I mean, to go from the bottom third to the top third, to go from the bottom 10 to 50th percentile, like that's unreal. That's, that's like unheard of. So you guys are absolutely fantastic and amazing. Sorry to bring you guys out on a July night, but we didn't want to wait till September. We were all excited as an admin team. So we had Tom Lowe, big shout out to Tom Lowe, uh, who's up uh, all night making t-shirts. Um, so give uh, Tom Lowe a big shout out on your way out there. I don't think he slept in a couple of weeks. But absolutely none of this would have been possible without, without you guys. So really from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of, you know, all our collective hearts, we were so excited when we saw this and we were so excited to share it. So we wanted to have you guys out. So thank you very much. And thank you for being patient. I know tonight with the board training and everything was a long night. So thank you guys for sticking around. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody. Um, so transitioning, I know Jim has two presentations. If you want to just get those queued up in the, uh, intern while we're talking about that, uh, we did host link it the last two days. We actually hosted a training here, uh, where we had over 40 districts and had over hundred participants come out to, to our media center and, and, and learn and, and watch what we do and, and kind of facilitated a lot of that training. So that's a pretty a big shout out to Jim, the curriculum department. So thank you for all your hard work with that. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Jim so you can uh, go through your two presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Latwes. Good evening, members of the Board of Education, uh, distinguished faculty, staff, members of the public. Thank you so much for being here tonight. So uh, continuing a lot of the themes that Dr. Latwes just talked about in, on the theme of you know, uh, communicating to our staff how much they're valued and appreciated, uh, I'd like to introduce our Climate and Culture Survey update.
It says on, so we're gonna we're gonna get this working, or I'm gonna start telling dad jokes. All right. So um, with the with the assistance of the tech department, we can just advance the slides manually. So all right, uh, just one is fine. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Thank you. All right, here we go. Take two. Climate and culture survey. So, uh, spring of 2022, uh, the district partnered with a third party vendor to uh, administer a robust climate and culture survey that uh, gives us feedback on employee satisfaction across 12 domains and areas. So we took that information, took their suggestions, and from there formulated action plans to address some of the uh, you know, uh, feedback that we had received. And we found that it, there we go, predominantly landed in five areas. Uh, new staff transitions, perception of workloads, student behavior, communication, and relationships and growth. So from there, uh, we use those as the as the starting points to manufacture a plan to meet the better meet the needs of our staff. There were there were areas that um, you know maybe things that we were doing that weren't being heard or seen or received uh, by the staff. Um, you know there's it takes there's two elements of communication: the message that's uh, intended and the message that's received. And so sometimes we figured, okay, you got to clean up some of the messaging, or maybe some of the things we're doing. Uh, you know, we need to do maybe a little bit differently, and, and we're open to, uh, we have the, you know, the humility to recognize if we have to change course on stuff. So here's what we did. So uh, we uh, partnered with the BEA to construct a revised version of the survey to garner feedback on these uh, types of things specifically. And so we provided a list of, hey, in the area of new, stand, uh, new staff transitions, here's all the changes and, and things that we've implemented. Is it making a difference? Okay, and kind of replicating that for all of those. So we wanna know, are the things we were doing working? So we administered a follow-up survey to the staff and uh, by building, and so I'm here to share those results with you tonight. So for each building, you're gonna see uh, two sets of data. This is the raw data just coming right out of the um, cut and pasted straight from the Google Forms. And uh, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see, so we made a little more crowd-friendly version. And so for each school, we broke down across the bottom there, those are your five topics, new staff transitions, perceptual workloads, student behavior, communication, relationships, and growth. The black is the percentage of people who disagree or strongly disagree that it has improved over the past year. And the orange is the folks who feel that it has improved, either strongly uh, agree or agree. And then of course, the it does not sum to 100 because the delta, the difference of those will be the folks who are neutral, who picked either like a three out of five on the Likert scale. So one and two, you disagree, strongly disagree. And you can see it's pretty drastic uh, at the Dumpy School. So some really, really positive things happening. Uh, folks there agree on every indicator that it's improving. So that, that's excellent. Moving to Collins, again, replicating that same format. You know, again, uh, it was different things happening in each building to address these uh, different areas. But again, that same format of what percent of folks agree or disagree that it's improving. And there you go in a little bit more crowd friendly. Communication, relationships and growth. You know, I think a lot of those things are highlighted by the real positive responses that we've seen tonight and those positive interactions with staff and the admin team and stuff like that. And a lot of things we recognize, you know, especially around the workload, that's going to be something that, um, you know, you'll see as a theme throughout this tonight. We, uh, and, and we have some ideas for it, but that is, that's an area where I think, you know, more work will continue uh, to need to be done. So Donahue, again, that's the raw data. And of course, I know I'm going through this rather quickly. I have a whole nother <laughs> presentation and uh, we have a whole board meeting. So I don't want to keep you guys out here until midnight, but what we will do, we'll make sure that these go up on the um, district web page, uh, district uh, website, so you can uh, peruse them at your leisure. So this is where we started to see that, you know, folks feel like, you know, it's not really necessarily getting better. Not that necessarily it's getting worse, but not uh, that it's not necessarily getting better. And uh, th that sparked a lot of robust conversations and given us a lot of things to think about moving into next year of what are the areas in which we can work smarter, not harder? What are the areas in which 
okay, we, we have some flexibility to, uh, you know, lighten the workload and we're some areas where we don't because, you know, these are our mandates from uh, Trenton or whatever. So looking at that landscape, we're able to find out uh, the ways in which we can improve the daily lives for our staff members. Core belt, there's your raw data. And again, bringing in a little bit more crowd friendly, you know, uh, again, these, these are gonna be the two that, um, that we see where, you know, are gonna be really the focus and stuff for next year. Uh, there's a lot of areas where we did see, you know, that positivity. And again, the relationships, the, the, the power of that relationship between the admin team and the, and the uh, staff there at the Horbelt School, those are great. And student behavior, something that we're gonna to need to work on and address. We know that there are some lingering you know, issues from the, the so-called COVID years, the COVID hangover for some student behavior. Some of the kids do struggle with the self-regulation. They do struggle with acting appropriately in a school setting. Um, and so we have some, some ideas and thoughts on how to, how to deal with that as well. For Brackman, again, there's your raw data. And then a little bit more crowd-friendly format. Um, and shout out, you know, to the Brackman team this year. I think they did a fantastic job in, uh, in addressing a lot of that. And uh, sometimes it's finding that right mix, that right blend of how you work with the staff to deliver those clear and consistent expectations, that clear and consistent message. Um, I will tell you, though, you know, for, for a lot of teachers that that burnout is real, that burnout is real. You know, and we see that replicated around the state, around the nation. Um, and we talk, uh, you know, locally about how much the profession has changed. I know Dr. Latwis has brought up a number of times, just for those of us, you know, this is, uh, I think, my 20th year in education, and it's a radically different, you know, uh, field than it was 20 years ago, the, the expectations. And, and I could easily rattle off 10 or 15 things off the top of my head that have been imposed upon us, okay, from, uh, from the Department of Education. Again, these are well-meaning things. But 20 years ago, harassment, intimidation, and bullying didn't exist, or, or at least as a, as a, you know, a, a state mandate. Student growth objectives didn't exist. The park test didn't exist. You know, student learning standards were, were common core. They were a lot more simple. So the profession has become inordinately more complex. There's so many more mandates and things that we're required to do. Schools have become such a hub for services, okay, for the community. And, uh, and, you know, we're ready to meet that mandate, um, but, but I think folks are recognizing that it's, it's challenging. It is very challenging to be a, uh, an educator in 2023. Barnard High School, home of the Bengals, there's your data and putting it into more kind of crowd-friendly format. Again, we've seen those same three things. The staff transitions, the communications has been positive, the relationships and growth has been positive. And these are kind of two persistent challenges. So this has been helpful in, in identifying for us those areas in which we are making substantive progress, where we are making people's daily lives feel uh, easier and more manageable. And this has given us a clear indication of the areas in which you know, more work will need to be done. So what is that going to look like? Uh, so we have some ideas. We have some ideas. And uh, I'll... I'll, I'll um, you know, to kind of tip my cards a little bit now, um, but most of this, you know, we're gonna we're gonna unveil for the staff in September, so they feel like they're really partnering with us and, and moving the organization forward. So we got to think of every person as ten. We really have to value each other, seeing the best in other people. Um, for those of you who have seen the show Ted Lasso, that was kind of a theme that we came up at. That positivity. Um, you know, bringing, bringing the, the bright side to every situation, thinking of people as a 10, empowering each other. You know, we often say sometimes too, you know, if, if you're in a tough situation, you know, if it's a department meeting, a faculty meeting, and, and you know, people are getting, you know, frustrated with the situation or, or whatever the case may be, that's the mentality of just kind of hit pause. And it's like, look to your left, look to your right. This is the team, this is us. There's no, there's no cavalry that's going to come riding down over the hill. We're going to win or lose with the people in this room. So let's do it. Let's win. Let's pick each other up. We can do this, but we got to do it together. So that's really the theme that we, you've been hearing all night about that collaboration of folks working together to make everything, um, make everything, uh, make, to make, that, make the magic happen. Everyone has a voice. So this was a, a process. It's called the World Cafe. I'm not going to click on the link right now. You can take a look at it. 
but it's, it's a really powerful process that we were trained in, I think in like the 15, 16 school year. And we kind of, you know, we explored it and then it kind of went on the shelf and, and it's something actually to give credit to Dr. Saxon. He, he um, you know, remembered that and brought that back as being a really powerful, it's really just a protocol for having conversations, you know, uh, in large groups and for, for a large group of people to, ha to articulate and be uh, able to express themselves and have all their voices heard in a productive way. So maybe that's a strategy we could use, you know, in a department meeting, in a faculty meeting, so that everyone really can, you know, contribute in a meaningful way. When you empower people, when you have, when you give them a voice, um, I think about the work of uh, Daniel Pink um, and, and folks like that who study motivation and, and, and things uh, of that nature and, and how to get people excited. Uh, a lot of that comes down to the autonomy, treating people with dignity and respect, giving people the opportunity to flourish and celebrating them. So let's continue kind of those themes. So what, what are we thinking about a little bit for next year? Recognition, small and large recognition, putting people on the stage whenever we can, uh, things like you know this, uh, this evening's uh, celebration. We need to do that as much as we possibly can um, because there's so much good stuff to celebrate. And folks realize that it's authentic when we call them up and highlight this stuff because these achievements are real. We have come so far in, in a short amount of time. That kind of comes to the section of the, the my why. Bringing people back, sometimes it's easy to lose uh, perspective. It's easy to lose focus. You know, if, you've, if I've been doing a job for 20 years or whatever the amount of time is, and it's like, you just keep getting up every day and you're in that flow and you kind of forget, like, how did I get here? Like, why, what, what started? And, and if you can bring people back to that moment when they first got into education, they're so excited. Oh my God, I got my first classroom. I remember my first teaching job. Oh my gosh, the first time I saw my name on a classroom door, I think I like, oh, I think I cried tears of joy. And so, so we want to bring people back to that moment because sometimes you forget what we got started for in the first place. It's just to help kids, man. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. It's caring about kids. And if you care about kids, and if you're willing to help each other and work together as a team, amazing things can happen. And that's really been the formula for success. So bringing in the human element, help folks um, remember how and why we started this down this journey. I mean, every one of us, every one of us who works here now, we, we asked for this. We, we asked for this opportunity. And and so many of us are, you know, we're so grateful to have it. And some of us maybe kind of forgot along the way that this was something that at one point we really, really wanted. So we want to make this place that magic kingdom where everyone wants to be, everyone's super happy. Um, and, and I think we can do that. I really do. Okay, so what does that look like? Again, digging into the why. That, that's a, such a powerful motivator for people. So many times we focus on the what and the how we're going to do. Oh, here's what we're going to do and here's how we're going to do it. Okay, go team, go. Well, we forgot the why. We forgot why we're doing this. The why is what motivates people. People don't get excited about the how. People get excited about the why. So we need to remember that and, and um, bring that into it a, a little bit more. Mountaintops, not treadmills. If you ever run on a treadmill, it's easy just like I was saying, being in that profession, doing that daily grind. You're on the treadmill. It feels like you've been on there forever. You look down, it's been two minutes. You know, it's, it's hard to, to get a sense of perspective. And you certainly don't feel like you're making any progress, right? You're watching the seconds tick away, which seems like an eternity. Now, contrast that with something like climbing a mountaintop. Yes, it feels daunting when you're standing at the base of the mountain looking all the way up. And if you have someone to encourage you to get started, what happens is as you start climbing that mountain, you're making discernible, visible progress. So at lunchtime, I might be tired and I'm being like, oh man, I don't know if I can keep going. But then you turn around and look back down and you can see how far you've come. And that is such a powerful motivator because you know, every step is bringing you closer to a, a concrete destination. The goals start to become attainable. That's when they become less overwhelming. That's when they actually becomes like a motivator of, oh wow, look how far I've come. I can't quit now, I'm almost there. You don't get that sense on the treadmill. So how do we turn this, this occupation? How do we turn this? Hello, hello, okay. How do, we, how do we turn this experience into that mountaintop type of um, you know, moment where folks feel like they're making progress? Because that, is, that keeps the fire burning, okay? So uh, again, talking about the things that we can change, 
um, the things that, that maybe we don't have control over, and putting our heads together on, on different ways of connecting with kids. One of our uh, common, I'm going to address the topic of uh, student behavior now. One of our uh, common aphorisms here is that all behavior communicates something. So yeah, that kid might be acting out, but what are they really trying to tell you with that behavior? So instead of treating every uh, incident as an adversarial, you know, uh, combative, you know, moment, what is that kid really trying to express? And if I can make a deeper connection with that child, then all of a sudden a lot of the behaviors melt away because maybe they were just looking for a safe and loving adult to connect with. Maybe they were just, you know, venting from something that's totally unrelated to your class. And it just happens to be the moment that their, their emotional pot boils over. So, you know, as we can better understand and connect with kids, I think we can ameliorate some of those changes. And as we can continue to support each other and work together as that team, I really do think we can continue to make our jobs easier and make it more rewarding for all of us. So that's just an update. Again, we've made some progress. We have some more work to be done. Um, so I'll take a, a moment now to transition actually to the next topic, please, which is a, a broader scale focus on the uh, uh, Board of Education strategic plan action plans for um, this past school year. All right, awesome, thank you. So, so the um, climate and culture piece is a very, very important uh, element, but it's certainly not the only one. We've had uh, a number of um, board goals that we've you know, uh, been focusing on. Obviously, they're all centered around uh, promoting and developing student growth and learning. And so here, here they are, creating an engaging environment, the social emotional well-being, connections with the community, and of course, fiscal responsibility. So let's take a look. We chipped away at each of those this year. I'm just going to highlight a, a few things. Obviously, there's tons and stuff, uh, tons of stuff we could focus on. So if we're trying to uh, create uh, larger and stronger student engagement, we're looking at things like academy style experiences and project based learning. Well, we've had some really cool of those authentic real life experiences. Uh, we have a new aviation course uh, landing here at Barnegat High School. That's a plain joke. Um, uh, the SHIELD program is continuing to grow and expand, the COCO with the COP, we're expanding the dual enrollment programming. One of the highlights of the year, if any of you saw the Creature Collaboration Project, was absolutely spectacular. Um, if you didn't, I'll just, in, in a few seconds or less, we had elementary children draw a, an imaginary creature, you know, like a monster type creature, whatnot. We then gave those, and, and they wrote a little paragraph about describing the creature, where it lives, what it does, et cetera, et cetera. Then we brought that creature up to the uh, high school uh, art classes, reimagined that same creature, obviously with a much greater technical ability uh, for our high school artists. We had a mix of 2D, we had a mix of 3D uh, art. Um, and then we tagged in the recording arts studio, who then created a soundtrack for this creature. Uh, ambient effects of the jungle that it would live in and, and or ominous music or happy music if it's a smiley uh, type of creature. But it was just a great way to bring in really diverse, um, you know, talents across the uh, art and music spectrum and engage kids, uh, you know, throughout the district. It was so cool for the little ones to see their creature come to life, um, you know, from, from the high school kids to bring it to life. So, so those kinds of things, th those are the things that kids remember for the rest of their lives. And, and that's the type of experience that we want our kids to have here at Barnegat. So we have some kids, you know, unfortunately, who are struggling. So one of the things that we're going to try to do or that we did do for them is really get them plugged into all the opportunities. One of the things that we uh, value here is giving kids that uh, as many opportunities as we possibly can. We never want to close the door on a child who wants to learn. So a, a number of things we've talked about already, but to just kind of highlight the Bengal boot camp, the Bengal bosses, uh, we would have frequently have breakfasts, celebrations um, for, you know, the, say the second grade class with the, uh, you know, the highest reading scores or, or the, you know, the battle of the books. So we're, we're looking for opportunities to celebrate uh, children who are succeeding. And we've, and we're continuing, not looking for, we are, we are uh, celebrating the children and simultaneously providing opportunities for the children that need a little bit extra support to be successful. 
Okay, uh, other things here at the high school, the teacher shout outs, trying to find ways to give teachers voice, uh, PDs and uh, support in faculty meetings, uh, adding teachers to committees, listening to their recommendations and implementing them to the best ways possible. Um, and that, that feedback loop is something that people really respond to. So the catch a tiger by the toe, uh, the five minute power PDs, anything that we can do, uh, sort of like tips and tricks, you know, pro tips, either to help make folks' lives a little bit easier or for them to go home at the end of the day saying, man, my principal really appreciates me. You know, he or she went out of their way to, you know, recognize me in, a, in an authentic way. And that's really meaningful. So like those types of things really fill our buckets. Uh, Channel 22, the new scoreboard, uh, extensive communication uh, with families throughout the year. That communication piece is something that we heard loud and clear about keeping people in the loop. So we've really stepped it up in the, the ways and the methods and, that we have uh, uh, shared information with the, uh, with the community through social media, through our uh, community engagement specialists. We had rock, record box office draws for our uh, uh, theater, Bengal Theater Company, fantastic. Guest speakers, career week, challenge day, project crash. You know, so many cool opportunities, uh, you know, to try to meet the moment in terms of giving the, uh, the, the schools and the children and the, and the adults the things they need. Uh, so we heard a little bit from Mr. Toddings about the amazing growth at Brackman and the things we were able to happen uh, for there. Um, goal recognition program, after school assistance, all these programs really made a big impact. Giving teachers a voice, committees to revamp our math and ELA labs. As we've been saying, one of the common things is there's a number of stuff from Trenton that we just don't have any control over and we can't, you know, we can't abrogate or, or um, end uh, certain practices or mandates or requirements from Trenton, but we can take and make them go from compliance to quality and make them as meaningful and robust as we possibly can so they have the best possible impact. PTA, communication, you know, Brackman uh, was really on the ball with that. So that's a, that they did a fantastic job in those areas. Uh, they also did a career day as well. Uh, fun run, community organizations getting involved, uh, staff volleyball game, you know, lots of, lots of good things happening there. Warbelt School. Uh, again, when we talk about uh, new opportunities for kids to get them excited, it was a drone learning program. Uh, for kids, you know, we're constantly building out the science, technology, engineering components. Um, we were recipients, the district received a $10,000 grant from Rutgers University uh, for a study of climate change. And uh, you'll see on the board agenda tonight, uh, concomitant with that grant is the addition of an AmeriCorps volunteer uh, free of charge uh, to uh, the Horbelt School uh, through that grant to assist with that program. Uh, here's just a huge example of in terms of staff empowerment. These are all amazing things. La Fiera was fantastic. Uh, but, and all of these were uh, led by teachers, so which is which is really powerful. That's the kind of ownership that we're excited to see in a uh, in a school when teachers really step it up. Um, parents came out in droves for for a, uh, uh, a number of these programs in the Memorial Day program for veterans uh, was fantastic at the Horbelt School. And uh, that's what we want to see. It's, it's, a, it's a great testament to the, the power of this community. Okay, student growth at, um, at uh, Donahue. Of course, we've heard quite a bit of that from Ms. Santola, just to kind of uh, highlight, because this is awesome stuff, and we, we do like to highlight uh, the amazing things that are happening. Uh, intervention manager, about all the books, Barnegat Cares traits. I mean, the list, the list goes on and on. They were very uh, uh, thoughtful and very mindful in improving student reading through the implementation of the, the things that you see here, having a scaffolded uh, a reading program throughout the year to, to kind of bring up the expectations for things. Uh, from there, meeting with teachers one-on-one, -on -one, uh, developing new traditions. The lawn signs were very popular with members in the community. Collaborating with SHIELD, COCO with the COP. Our PTA is so amazing and helpful, right? Shout out Mrs. Santola. Uh, at the Collins School uh, to, to address student behavior, uh, fundamental skills, supports centers, all these types of things that improve student engagement and decrease behaviors. Shout out to the Collins crew for leading those conversations. Uh, dismissal processes. And those are the types of things that I think teachers really feel the impact of. Little things like arrival and dismissal, when you're able to listen and hear their 
um, feedback. The therapy dog program. Where's Michelle Cucinata? Is there any? Are there any? Are there any dogs? Where are my dogs at? Um, but they were really, really popular. Field day, after school mentoring, academic assistance. I mean, the list really goes on and on. And um, at the Dunphy School, student recognition, pizza with the principal. Um, you know, we're always looking for those opportunities to uh, for kids to uh, grow and be recognized. So teachers did a fantastic job leading the different committees at, at Dunphy School. That's an area where they have a tremendous amount of pride. Monthly PLCs, that stands for professional learning communities. So, you know, we really tried our best to uh, take and listen to the feedback and stuff that the, the parents uh, and staff members um, are asking for. Polar Express, second annual art show, over 300 people. I mean, I mean, the list just goes on and on. It's, it's really fantastic. So just, you know, in uh, conclusion, I want to thank you guys for this opportunity to highlight some of the amazing work that has been done. And of course, there's always more work to do, but we're pleased that we're heading in a really good direction. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right, that concludes our section. So if we want to switch over to committee. <clears throat> yep, uh, we can jump quickly into committee discussions, um, which we would like to roll through as fast as possible. Uh, first up is finance and B&G. Um, Ms. Tarnowski, are you able to provide an update on finance and B&G? Yeah, finance met July 19, received the projects update. All projects are proceeding nicely. We got an update from transportation. The routes for next year are nearing completion for next school year. The opening of the parent portal will be for transportation will be August 24th, 2023. We discussed policy 7510, which we are seeking info on and sending it to governance. Um, and we will be meeting again August 15th. No, I'm not okay. So it's okay. Thank you. Any uh, any any questions for finance? Uh, to uh, uh, jump into education. Education committee met on uh, Wednesday, July 19th, 2.15. We discussed the usual, I mean, we discussed and we'll be voting on the usual motions, college university placement, continuing ed requests, field trips, and out of district workshops. Um, we will also have a motion to approve the adoption of a supplemental text to be used by the astronomy course, Barnegat High School, the universe and beyond. It inc includes uh, many curricular concepts and a way to um, show practical ways in which geometry is used in everyday life. We will also vote on a motion about, uh, uh, to approve discarding uh, various textbooks of, in the Spanish classes that are no longer in use. Uh, final motion to be voted on tonight is to approve the training of eight staff members in creative curriculum, Grow New Jersey Kids. The training will not exceed six hours per person at the uh, Barnegat Education Association hourly rate. We um, discussed the audit of the Climate Food Waste Reduction Grant that was spoken about earlier in, in Harbelt. We are very proud of a, a young woman who has graduated from Barnegat who's going to help us support that grant with our Harbelt students during this year. We discussed the NJGPA results in math and LA. LA. Uh, Mr. Barbieri spoke about the state graduation requirements uh, with our committee and that um, particular test is given to all 11th graders with an offer to 12th graders who haven't met minimum required scores. We are pleased that our state results as well as our district results showed a large improvement when compared to last year's results. Uh, lastly, we discussed and reflected on adoption and implementation, implementation of the revised health and PE curriculum. We would like to commend the Barnegat staff and the administration for a complete, thorough, and successful job to develop and implement this very sensitive curriculum adoption. That's it for tonight. Any education questions? Any questions, right? Okay. Uh, Ms. Harnowski, governance. Please. Governance met July 19th. We went over the first read of one policy and carried over the remote uh, learning handbook to proceed forward. And uh, that's pretty much it. Any governance questions? Thank you. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> personnel committee met on July 18th, went through normal business of new hires, um, resignations, retirements, et cetera, and several different placements uh, throughout the district. Um, any questions on personnel? That is, uh, that wraps up the uh, Cal 
uh, committee discussion portion. I'd like to adjourn the committee of the whole portion and convene it to the regular board meeting. Please, can I have a motion? I move. Second. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Many holes adjourned at 8.57. And I please call to order the regular meeting for the Barnegat Township School District Board of Education for July 25th. Is Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Iamonte? Here. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Here. Ms. Tarnowski? Yeah. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Here. All right, we have a quorum for the regular meeting. Steve, do you want to do the Open Public Meeting Act statement before we do the flag salute? You bet. Okay, uh, notice of this meeting has been forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Beacon, tap into Barnegat, and placed in the foyer of each Barnegat Township school. In the Barnegat Township Municipal Build, uh, excuse me, Barnegat Township Municipal Building has been filed with the Barnegat Township Municipal Clerk in conjunction with the Open Public Meetings Act. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, everybody rise for a flight salute, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Uh, we do have an agenda addition that Dr. Lettwitz will highlight here. Uh, so there's three additions under the superintendent's district highlights information and comment section, the uh, number uh, seven, there shall be one motion, uh, memorandum of understanding, motion to approve the MOU related to the agreement between the Barnegat Township BOE and the superintendent dated July 25th, 2023 and discussed in executive session. You'll see two motions under personnel committee, there'll be number 41 and 42, so there'll be 46 total, 41 the new 41 will be a settlement agreement employee matter, motion to approve the settlement agreement between the Barnegat uh, Education Association and the Barnegat BOA, dated July 25th, 2023, is discussed in executive session. And then 42 will be settlement agreement grievance, motion to approve the uh, settlement agreement between the Barnegat BOA, BEA and the Barnegat BOE on the grievance BEA 222301, dated July 25th, 2023, and discussed in executive session. Okay. Can I please have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the agenda? Okay. Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. We got an agenda. Okay. Uh, can I please have a motion for the approval of the minutes from the executive session and regular session for the June 13th meeting? So moved. Second. <clears throat> okay. Um, Ms. Angus. Yes. Ms. Cherney. Yes. Ms. Jeannie. Yes. Mr. Iamonte. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Sarno. Yes. Ms. Tarnowski. Yes. Ms. Washburn. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. Motions carry. Okay. Uh, can I please have a motion for item number one? Uh, under the sec superintendent's highlights section. Second. Okay, any discussion on that? All right. Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? No. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Nope. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motion carries. Okay. Uh, Dr. Latwis, do you want to run through your highlights? Uh, no, we pretty much covered all the highlights uh, during the Barney and Bray section earlier. Okay. Um, for my remarks, I will rush through things. I hope everybody's enjoying their summer. I um, appreciate the district staff working hard uh, to get everything ready for September, working on curriculum updates, bus routing, ESY, summer school, et cetera. Um, we had some good training from uh, the NJSBA this, uh, this evening which we will follow up with further information. So I'd like to thank Ms. Friedman for her support and knowledge. 
the presentation made tonight demonstrating the success, the success of the district is amazing. Our school moving up as much as uh, schools moving up as much as they have is, is fantastic news. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do, but I'm really proud of our district and, and uh, what you guys are all doing to make our community better. Uh, you are making the community better. So thank you for that. Um, we had uh, an update tonight on the school's climate and culture. I, I implore all of the staff to take this process seriously. Um, the, the surveys, all of it is critical. Uh, we can really drive change to improve satisfaction and morale in the district, uh, but we need everyone to participate and, and we need everybody to, to, to be open and honest and provide feedback that the district can take action to solve. Um, I'd like to uh, say good luck to the retirees and enjoy their retirement and thank Mr. DiPaolo for his donation of tricycles to the Dumphy School. So if that's all I had, can I please have a motion to enter public session? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Right. We're in open public session. The Barnegat Township Board of Education appreciates and welcomes public comment, advice, and suggestions, especially when it's intended to assist the Board of Education. Please feel free to speak to the board during the public session. Comments and discussion will be limited to one five minute period per individual unless requested by the chairperson to continue on a point of clarification. Public comment and special meetings of the board shall be related to the call of the meeting. In accordance with the Board of Education policy, each participant must be recognized by the presiding officer and must preface their comments by an announcement of their name, address, and group affiliation if appropriate. Your anticipated courtesy to the members of the public and the board is appreciated. And with that, the floor is open. All right. Does uh, anybody in the room like to speak, please? <clears throat> Elise Lewis, 381 20th Ave, Brick, New Jersey. I'm Elise Lewis, and I'm a third grade teacher at the Downingview School. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to speak on behalf of the wonderful programs that have been implemented over the past few years. Thanks to the Board of Education and Dr. Latwis, over the last three years, we have received updated math, reading, and writing programs, as well as some tremendous supplemental resources. Having these updated resources has been a tremendous help in bridging the learning gaps of our students. The implementation of the iReady program for reading, writing, and math has been a welcome to change. This program houses all the resources the teachers need all in one place. It is extremely user-friendly and has provided data that has been critical in the success of the students. When the iReady math program was first in implemented, I'm going to be honest, I was not 100% sold. I struggled with the new style of teaching and routines the program suggests you follow. I had received my lowest observation score in my career. I cried, asked Mrs. Santola. It was embarrassing. <laughs> Um, at first I was like, it has to be the program. It's not me. Then I met with the coaches and they came in, they helped me. I observed other colleagues and they opened my eyes to the wonderful things that this program had to offer. Um, I'm happy to say that the following year, my observations skyrocketed and my growth and support of the, you know, instructional teacher, I wouldn't have been able to get all of that done. Um, in the past, we have not had a writing program to follow. Teachers use the state learning standards to create our own resources and in many cases by our own. This was extremely time consuming and with the implementation of the new iReady writing program, teachers are now able to spend time creating individual lessons for the students. Along with the iReady writing program, we have also begun to implement the reading component of iReady. I have truly enjoyed this program. It is designed to follow a gradual release model. That's where I show the students appropriate strategies and techniques to use when reading a variety of reading types, such as nonfiction, fiction, expository, and poetry. The beginning of the lesson is very heavy teacher led. As the week progresses, the teachers slowly begin to take, the students begin to take more of the reading at an independent level. Without the board and Dr. Laus's continued support, we would not have these fabulous resources. The reading and math diagnostic tests, as well as the STAR assessments that are given at the beginning of the school year, are a great tool to gauge your instruction. It gives each teacher a clear understanding of where each individual child shows strength and weaknesses based on the state learning standards. This gives the teachers the ability to truly give individualized instruction based on individual student needs. There are online lessons that can be assigned to either enrich or reteach students. The Fast Forward program has been a great supplemental resource. 
This program has been a big helping hand with the students' growth in their reading levels. My class began the year at 65% proficient and ended at 83% proficient. That's an 18% gain. I wanna also point out how wonderful it is to receive students from the Collins School that are so secure in their early literacy skills that I began the year with 65% of the students at grade level. This enables me to focus on helping students read to learn opposed to learning to read. This makes teaching grade level content so much easier and I see fewer and fewer students coming to third grade below level. Seeing your students grow and meet their goals is the absolute best part of teaching. Thanks to the wonderful resources and the school district has implemented, we have seen the most gross growth ever. Thank you, Dr. Lawis and the Board of Education for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you. If anybody would, online would like to speak, speak, please use the hand raise feature or message in the chat. Or anybody else in the room that would like to speak? Ms. Mann. Good evening, Sue Mayo, um, 165 Barnegat Boulevard, also Supervisor of Elementary. I'm going to be reading tonight on behalf of two of our teachers, Heather Harmon and Emily Dansenson, who were not able to attend, but wanted to express their gratitude to Dr. Lewis, the Board of Ed, and the um, administration team. So I'm going to start with Heather. These are Heather's words. I have been teaching in Barnegat for four years now. My time here has been nothing short of amazing. My first year of teaching was when the schools closed due to the pandemic. My principals, supervisors, directors, and superintendents supported me through such a tough time in my career. I came from another district where I never saw my instructional coach, supervisors, directors, or superintendent. In the past few years, the instructional coaches and supervisors have lent all their resources and tools to help our students succeed, which shows in our students' test results. Dr. Latwis and his leadership team would do frequent classroom walkthroughs to show their support to the students and the staff, and this was always greatly appreciated. These administrators have inspired me to obtain my supervisor's and principal endorsement. Every administrator has left an imprint on me. Here's a paragraph I wrote in my first graduate course two years ago on my why I want to become an administrator. When I became an educator, I looked up to my supervisors. My supervisors were my lifeline during my first year in the classroom. Those given leaders showed me all the tools in their toolbox to help me succeed while allowing me to show them what was in my fresh and shiny new toolbox fresh out of college. I've gone to numerous administrators, including Dr. Latwis, Latwis sorry, to help guide me with assignments. Their knowledge and support are crucial to getting by in this profession. I am truly thankful to have such strong support system guiding their staff and students. These are Emily Danson's words. Being relatively new to the school district, I could tell very quickly there was an overwhelming sense of determination to sort of rebuild Barnegat schools. In fact, the year I was hired marked the beginning of the next 10 years. This was especially exciting to me as I really wanted to be a part of something that felt authentic with our students' success being at the top of what is most important. At Donahue, this could not be more true. The administration fully supports this ideal and has high expectation for us teachers. While sometimes this can be challenging and for lack of better words, very stressful, it is truly what makes us better teachers. The administration understands that sometimes uncomfortable nature of growth supports us to take risks in our teaching. They provide us with meaningful feedback and assist in supporting the whole child. Regina and Sue can be counted on for endless suggestions on how to best create academic discourse during ELA or using math manipulatives. I'm sure you love that, Regina. <laughs> Brittany often saves the day when it comes to challenging behavior or creating an inviting, inclusive environment in the classroom. Veteran teachers have wisdom, insight, and offer knowledge that cannot be found in educational textbooks. All of this and so much more is what makes Donahue School successful. Similarly, all of this not possible without the support of the whole from top to bottom, from our superintendent to our teachers. Thank you for caring about the success of our students, whether that be academic assistance or understanding that sometimes they just need to be told they matter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody online have any comments? Anybody else in the room? 
I please have a motion to adjourn executive session. I'm sorry, public session. So moved. Second. Right. Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Journey? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, the floor is closed. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, can I please have a motion for finance BNG committee items one through 11? So moved. Second. All right, any further discussion on that? Hey, Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes to everyone, but I'm abstaining from number seven. Okay. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Okay. Mr. Iamonte, I got you. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motions carry. Okay, uh, can I please have a motion for education committee items one through seven? So moved. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Excuse me, any discussion on that? Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. And Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Okay, motions carry. Okay, uh, item number 12 is education committee items for information only. Um, and 13, can I please have a motion for governance items one through four? So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Motions carry. Okay. And can I please have a, a motion for personnel committee items one through 46? So moved. Second. All right, any further discussion? Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Uh, yes to one through 43E, abstain to 43E, yes to 43F through 46. Okay, so just abstaining on 43D, gotcha. Or 43E? E, I'm sorry. Okay, gotcha. Um, and Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motion's carry. Okay, uh, next up is uh, item 15 is personnel committee item for information purposes only. Um, can I please have a motion to adjourn this Board of Education meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Ms. Angus? Yes. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Ms. Jeannie? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Sarno? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Ms. Washburn? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, we're adjourned at 9.15.